Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to episode 22 of Public Circle Live. Uh, my name is Emily Olson, and this is Adam Olson, MLA for Saanich North and the Islands, and also my partner of 12 years. So we just... Uh, Last Sunday. On Sunday. 12 years on the 12th. So, um, yeah, we realized today that it was the two-year anniversary of the launch of Adam's campaign. And um, I thought I'd check in with you to see where you're at as a, as a whole being um, in your role, uh, not only as an MLA, but as a father and a community member and a son and, and brother and cousin, nephew, uncle, all of the, all of the above, husband. Multiple and, roles. Yeah, as we all have and just curious about um, the various states of being and, and sort of how your your thriving areas that you know you could maybe look at a little more areas where you felt you've had a lot of success um, so I'm just going to go through and sort of talk to you about um, the physical mental emotional and spiritual aspects of maintaining health so overall health sure so um, I guess we'll start off with physical um, yeah, because today was a big day for you, so talk about it. Today I got my butt kicked. Uh, I woke up this morning, I woke up a few days ago and realized that, uh, well, from a, from a health perspective, from a physical health perspective, I had some work to do. I had gone through a pretty big trans uh, transformation, uh, maybe was it three years ago now? Two or three years, three years ago now? Um, no, two, two and a bit years ago. Anyway, uh, I lost a bunch of weight and, um, changed my diet, started walking, started walking with, uh, a cousin of mine, uh, Gord Elliott. We would get up in the morning and go for a walk. Um, but I, I realized, uh, yes, always, always looking after me. Uh, I realized that, um, I had, I had some more work to do, uh, that while I was eating better and, and, and doing some light physical exercise that actually, um, I was hurting when I shouldn't hurt and I'm getting, I'm, I'm 40, what how am I? 42? 42. I'm 42. And that it's, it's now time to start to get a little bit more fit. And so I went into Keating CrossFit and, uh, I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and there's a whole bunch of fit people that we see running up and down Keating Crossroad. And I thought I'd like to be fit like them. And, uh, and so I went in this morning and now I know why they're fit. <laughs> uh, and I also know that there are, are, um, uh, muscles in my body that, uh, I mean, I saw people today doing, uh, handstand pushups, which I didn't think was possible. Um, You'll and get there. I didn't I have believe. to do them. It's my first day. So they didn't make me do the handstand pushups. They made me do the alternative, which was um, sitting, you know, shoulder work. But, you know, I, th I think that it's important, um, you know, in the legislature, there is, uh, it's, a, it's basically a sedent sedentary lifestyle. Um, we are behind a desk a lot. Uh, if it's not in our office, it's uh, in the chamber. We're behind a desk. There's a lot of sitting. Uh, we can go hours a day uh, sitting in a, in a chair, sitting at a desk, and um, and it's just not healthy. And I find that at the beginning, you know, I've gone through now two, well, three full sessions um, in the in the legislature, and we're getting ready for the October session. And uh, and I can go hours in a day without without moving. And I find that at the beginning of the session, I might go in, you know, feeling good and feeling pretty good, and then the diet starts to slip. It, it's more difficult to eat healthy because it's it. You're all we're all over the place, and eating in a consistent <laughs> way is not good. Is not easy. Um, find myself uh, that that then I rely on the restaurants around, and restaurant food isn't always that good. And you get deep into the session, you're exhausted, and you're not bringing or packing in lunches. So I felt that it was time before the session started. There's a good month and a half. Uh, for me to maybe bulk up a little bit and uh, get fit 
and try to take this session. What's funny? Sorry. <laughs> I love you. What the heck? No, no, no. It's good. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. So, but it, but to me, it's like, uh, you know, mental fitness requires a level of physical fitness, yeah, and yeah. and uh, I know that it's it's easy to just pack on the pounds uh, in the in the legislature. It's it's it is something that can happen. So, um, <clears throat> that's what I did today, and I intend on going back, <laughs> even though they kicked my butt. Yeah. I intend on going back on a regular basis, and hopefully, people will be able to see the transformation. Yeah, and I'm I'm really inspired by you and proud of you for the the changes you made in your diet. Um, obviously, sugar was a big one, but tell mm. me about the things that you've done differently for your physical well being, um, whether it be uh, you know some kind of treatments or what have you done specifically, and 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 how are you planning? And I'll support you in this. How are you planning on? You know whether it's meal prep or whatever the challenges that a lot of you know your constituents obviously have um, especially ones with uh, demanding work environments where it's strange shifts and just having the time to like prepare for that as well as you know raise a family and all that if, mm -hmm. if, if that's the case so what are what are some things that you've done or removed from your diet what are some things that you've added to assist you physically mm -hmm. and and then what is your plan going forward so uh I think one of the biggest things for me was cutting sugar out of my diet. Uh, and, and it was, it was one of these things in which, uh, I have, um, my, my family, I think, and, and I have a propensity to be at some point become a diabetic if, if you know, that that's in the family. And so diabetes being a, a thing and, and having parents that, uh, and a sister that works in the healthcare system, it's like, you need to start to take to deal with that, and in fact, now um, uh, now there's there's some other things around gluten that, that are starting to show up in a, in our family as well. So there's there's definitely some uh, some diet related issues that that I took very seriously, and you know I used to drink two. I think when we first met, I would I would drink two cans of Coke like they were like it was water, and I would and and literally I'd go up to the store to buy pop and I'd buy two cans of, of Coca-Cola. And this is not a commercial for Coca-Cola. They're probably pretty happy that I'm talking about them right now. Not in this light. I'd pop it and pound it back and I'd be bloated and, and just feel gross about it. And, and it was not, it was not good. And it was all that extra sugar. Uh, you know, I'd put sugar in my coffee. I'd put sugar on my cereal. I put, you know, extra sugar on everything. And, uh, and so, you know, I think that that was one thing. Another thing was I stopped eating, uh, I stopped eating bread and, and just needless carbs that way. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, certainly I think that one of the things that, that I'd like to do going forward is I'd like to look at more of a raw based and, and vegetarian based diet. And we do eat, and, and I know I, I get uh, a lot of messages from people that say, one of the things that we can do for climate change is to stop eating meat. And this is something that you and I have talked about in our diet. We, we tend to just fall back to the, sim the, 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 the four or five meals that are easy to cook and we do them all the time. And, and so I think what, to answer one of the other questions that you asked, the, the challenge will be to um, diversify, our, diversify the recipes that we use, get creative with it. You started to cook uh, some, some curry, some Thai-based curry dishes. I think, uh, I think that we can continue to play with the food that we're eating. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I think not, not, none of it's really that, uh, that shocking shop around the edges of the grocery store, um, yeah. for, for raw ingredients rather than for the packaged ingredients, try not to eat the snacks and, and at the end of the day and, uh, and feel rewarded for the, de the good decisions that are made. Yeah. And so what, what have you, uh, we'll move on to the other aspects of, of health, but have you done anything, introduced anything new into your like physical well-being? Um, um, how do you not, deal with I mean, pain or like, well, things like that? Not very well um, to right now. I mean, I think that part of the things that that we've been adding in and that I've and 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 I think that we've done a good job of kind of playing off of one another. So uh, we've got a we've got a really great. Uh, We've got a really great chiropractor for an example and and you go in there and and it starts with the fantastic massage mm -hmm. and then um she breaks us 
and puts us back together again. And we all have an amazing, uh, it's Joy. Um, Joy Shumka. Joy Shumka. Yeah, Thank you, Joy, for savage. breaking us. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, I think, I think that one of the things is I realize that I have this, I have this sore leg and sore shoulder for no reason. I, I'm not, I, I'm not working out. I'm not physically active. Why is it that I've got the soreness in this shoulder, right? And uh, today, after going and working out and getting active, I feel like a lot of it has been dealt with. So it's like, I think part of this is adding physical, some physical work, some physical fitness, uh, finding people that can look after you, whether it be chiropractor or an acupuncturist, uh, you know, or, and we've got those people in our lives as yeah. well. Um, I think it's, it's finding the right package of, of, of practitioners that can help at a, at a, um, um, at a proactive level before, yeah. you know, the, the, the big things could happen. Uh, looking after the way you eat, the way you move, actually moving, uh, not being so sedentary, challenging. Uh, I, I'm a lot like Andrew Weaver, who I work with on a regular basis. I'm motivated by competition. So, you know, I think that, I think that CrossFit's going to work for me because it's a group environment. I think we can do that. I'll be inspired by those people that are around me. I'll be driven by the competition. <laughs> so we'll see how it works out. Um, and, and I think that, I think that there's all sorts of options out there. It's just picking the ones that work for you and, and then being disciplined. And, uh, you know, it's, I, that to me has been the biggest challenge over the years is, you know, I'll start something and then having the, having the ability follow to through. follow through and yeah. continue. And that's tricky too. So, uh, you know, I'll just lead you in, I'll guide you in. So when you go back into the legislature, mm -hmm. I know there'll be that like awkward period of us trying to prepare you for being, continuing to be on your path of, of good health. Um, and, and having food and meals and, and, and snack ideas for you to, you know, uh, have for yourself there because mm -hmm. otherwise you get into repetition in the restaurant in the legislature and then if you go for walks it's it's often you know processed even though there's some good options down there um you know not and, I, and I really i mean the food's yeah. good i'm not gonna trash on the food but you don't know where it's coming from and then it, there's you know there's all kinds of things that you're going to come up with so for anybody having challenges in food prep whether it's for your kids or, or for maintaining health even for me i know there's a tendency to just go to the ca cafeteria and i make bad decisions because i choose the least worst option right so um how how would you give advice to people who've got to come up with with ideas around that without it being boring and just this whole like big heavy thing about food prep you know like it's some kind of burden well i just what do you say to yourself I just think that part of what's going to have to happen in the in the coming weeks or coming uh, months is to just not accept the excuses. Oh, I'm tired tonight. I can't do it. Or oh, this is not you know this is not what I want to be doing right now. I want to be doing something else. I know I chirped you when you were complaining about making the about why is it that I have to make the kids lunches? Um, and you know I think that the, I should take my own advice, right? And and. Perhaps it's perhaps it's you and I getting together after the kids go to bed, and and, and 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 you know hanging out, and this is part of our conversation in the evening as we reconnect after a long day. It's I think not accepting the uh, the excuses, the excuse making, which is very easy. I'm too tired. I'll do it in the morning. I don't have enough time in the morning. I, I slept in, or I, I think it's yeah. just yeah. buckling down and and actually being as I said about the about the physical fitness piece buckling down and actually doing it yeah. um, and, and saving some money in the, in the, in, in the process uh, and knowing what we're eating and eating healthy, but f working it into the routines, making it fun, having a good time, challenging each other with, hey, okay, you come up with a creative recipe or I'll come up with a creative recipe. Can we add something new? Um, you know, every once a week, can we add something yeah, new that yeah, we don't eat? That's a good idea. Variety. Can we try pulses? Can we try, you know, beans? Can we try getting our protein from somewhere other than than animals? Uh, so, you know, I think um, actually your phone should be on. Uh, can you put it on airplane mode? Yeah. Sorry, guys. I think you might have just got a. Anyway. I did ask. 
It's yeah, and good. Kathy Weisner makes a good point. She says, uh, Saanich is a good location for good food. And that's absolutely that's true. Right. And we were very busy this year. We didn't uh, grow a garden. We didn't grow anything this year other than our connection and our love. No, <laughs> um, that wasn't that's that always just was growing. something that we didn't do. But we really, you know, supporting. And this stuff's I find easy to do when we're supporting local businesses and farmers and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so we are making better far better choices where we go, where we where we buy things, where we shop. Love stopping in at Sun Trio and visiting Jackson the cat, and just making those connections and running into people, and it feels good, right? And and our our neighbors grow their own our neighbors and relatives grow their own food, and it's lovely watching them spend time with that that kind of prep. And stealing it from their so, garden. So yeah, and they're very generous. Um, I, you, so go ahead. okay, yeah. So um, because we're all multiple things and everything's sort of tied together, let's let's move into the mental because I, I think you've you've made some good good points and you've you've shared some of your story. So that's that's good. Um, so we'll 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 make that sort of commitment um, to. So we'll check back in. Of, yes. Let's that's commit. A good idea. Let's commit. We're gonna check back in in what. 90 days from now because sure, we'll be in the legislature good. then starting on October the 1st and uh, we're about to have a visit here yeah um, anyway uh, you'll see um, check back in with us ask us are we sticking to the plan are we sticking are we being disciplined and responsible to each other yeah. and to our children yeah and I did actually accountability is a big part of it too because um, in June uh, before I went away on my trip, I made a commitment I was going to run three to five k every day for fourteen days. Mm -hmm. And ev after every single run, I made a video uh, and and just said, "Okay, this is day whatever. This is day whatever." And it was just a way to talk to myself into my phone and be accountable. And I had these pretend people that were going to watch it, and I had a private Facebook group there that there was an accountability factor. But that was really huge. That was really beneficial and i think that when you have that either accountability partner whether you're supporting a family member or a friend or a, or a kid that you're gonna have more success because you have something to balance it against and then someone gave me some advice yesterday about celebrating mm -hmm. those successes and milestones and having it be fun and playful because i think we can be very serious and hard on ourselves and measuring things against accomplishment as opposed to becoming something so i'm going to celebrate my single visit to the crossfit <laughs> with some chocolate cake i don't think it works like that oh, okay okay so how do you balance your mental health how do you how do you see your mental health how do you acknowledge it love it all of those things uh, well, mental mental health has been uh, has been a challenge. It's, well, it's been a challenge. I think it's a challenge for a lot of people. It's been a challenge for me uh, over the years. Uh, get into some, you know, get in some to some negative cycles, and and it's it's tough to break out of it. Uh, in this this job is pretty mentally exhausting, and so I think that um, part of what we've started to explore and what I've started to explore is finding ways to reinvigorate the uh, mental energy. Um, I find it very, like I, part of the reason why I love this job so much is because I really get a lot of energy from people and, and really enjoy engaging and talking to people. Uh, and that gives me energy. Um, it is also, it also can be exhausting as well. So, okay. well, look who it is. Come say hi. Come say hello. Who's this? Ella. You're Ella. Yeah. Look at the camera and say hi to everybody. Hello. We told people that you were going to come and visit because we saw you walking down the, the dr driveway with your phone. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think mental health is something that we're talking an awful lot more about uh, publicly. And I know we've done a session on, on the public circle talking about mental health and the and the mental health journey that you've been on in, in terms of exploring um, varying states of mental health. And, uh, and, and for me, I find that there's lots of peaks and valleys in this job. So um, probably the biggest valleys are just coming out of 
a session where you've done where we've done weeks on end in the legislature and it's a very demanding piece recognizing that that is going to be a time when there's low energy mm -hmm. i think understanding and planning for that is going to be really important i think all of these fits so we just talked about diet and, and exercise that's going to help the piece uh on, around mental health uh, i think that part of it is being uh compassionate with with yourself with myself with you with me that recognizing that as the session is getting towards the end and we've got a six-week session coming up with a couple of breaks so this one's not going to be uh i wouldn't say it's not gonna be a big of a deal it depends on what issues are going to be debated um but you know like even so so that's on a that's on a, a macro level on a micro level i mean just take today for an example i waded into a into a conversation about about reconciliation about my identity about being a mixed heritage person and it was it's tough it's it comes at me from both sides i receive you know i i receive uh congratulations for talking about it i also today frankly received you know criticism for some of the things that i said and and approaches that i took and so even within a day you know recognizing that there's going to be ups and downs within a day and and being and being okay with that and understanding that look like you're so fully out there you're so fully public that um yeah you, you know you have to come up with strategies to be able to say look the day is not going to be perfect the most important thing is to be able to speak and 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 feel and and be and verbalize what you believe uh and 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 be passionate about it um but as well i think you know part of the i think part of what's going on here in this conversation is that coming up with strategies as a family finding those times to get away and go and hang out and you know tonight take Ella out you know Ella and I are going to have the chance to go and hang out with each other go for a swim or go you know go somewhere go do something go re-energize reconnect is uh is a great way to uh is a great way to re-energize the, the 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 mental drain that's this job um because it, it's pretty heavy duty there's there is a lot of issues right now you know and it uh from a mental perspective that um the the whale uh, the the mother whale and her and her uh dead baby calf was one that was that's that's really tough stuff that's that's going yeah. on the the constant flow of stories about climate change right now and the impacts of the wildfires and you know i i don't want to pretend at all that i'm being impacted like some British Columbians are like your dad, for example, and, and British Columbians that live up north. But I, but it weighs on you that the responsibility of the job is to try to find solutions for these, not just for the short term, but for the long term. So, so there is a there is a mental wear and tear on this, and uh, and I would say that I'm just starting to address and find strategies to uh, to deal with that that mental wear and tear that that is that is bound to happen not just on a day-to-day -day basis on a month-to-month -month basis on a year-to-year -year basis yeah and i think too like not only not only are you not responsible for all the things that are hard you also have a responsibility to at least address them sometimes because right. a lot of people are coming to you um and sometimes you even have to form an opinion on the spot about something that's without right. necessarily having all the information and i i do appreciate that sometimes you'll say uh you know i don't know all the ins and outs of something but here's my gut feeling on it or that you'll go and consult with other people and that's something that i i remember you doing <clears throat> right when you first got onto central sandwich council as you would constantly be having meetings and i see that as sort of a, a, a huge development part on your part but also that you're balancing the the father and the husband and the, the son and the brother part of you that mm -hmm. comes home and you can't just regurgitate all of that into the home. Mm -hmm. But you also need love from those exact same people to support you. And I think that you have this really uh, innate ability to just... Um, and I want to recognize you for this, is that you can leave some stuff at the door and not push it down or deny it or, or, or any of that, 
but that you are able to welcome, you know, your children and your family and your community and whatever's going on with the rest of your life because you're not just a politician. Um, and, and that you're able to offer it in moments that are appropriate and that you've got your special people who you bounce things off of, you know, um, your phone conversations <clears throat> with some of your friends and, and family members and when we have tea and, and talk about some things and, and support each other in that way, but that, that you're not carrying all of it all the time. And I think it's a continual like shedding of stuff. And when I saw you struggling uh, about the orca and her calf, I, made a decision to just let you be in that i felt instinctively that that was the right thing to do and that you would process it and i absolutely love that it was affecting you because it shows me that you're in in the right place in a lot of ways um uh for the work that you're doing um but i also felt pain for you i felt compassion that you were experiencing that but didn't necessarily know how to say it and you know maybe i shouldn't wait for uh, you know this to tell you that but I I'm telling you now because it came up and and I appreciate that that you have compassion for those things and that you think about the wildfires but that you have it you have a wealth of people that are willing to support you mentally when those struggles are real man like well <laughs> even big, the, they're big. so that so one of the biggest challenges in in our region right now is the and I'm I alluded to it earlier is the Johnny McDonald statue that removal and and um, what's interesting about this is that like I went over this and through this and around this over and over and over and over again for an entire week before really even saying anything I talked to I, I talked to my people we talked about it I had a long conversation with my mom who's a historian and and has got really good perspectives on this I talked to a bunch of people and even after all of that you know the minefield is real right and so and so there is a there is um, a, a responsibility that I have in the, in the role that I've accepted and that I asked for yeah. to have an opinion mm -hmm. on these things and then also there's a there's a responsibility to accept the response from that w whatever it is the fallout or the the uplifting or or whatever it is and, and recognize actually that you're bound to get both yeah. and and to not and, and to know that you know what I speak you speak your truth you do what needs to be done you add your voice to the mix and 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 add whatever value you can and, and whatever value I can to it and, and recognize that you have to I, I remember a, a, before we move on from mental here uh, the, the mental aspects of the job um, I'll tell a little story. I used to work at, at um, I did used to work at McDonald's, but I used to work at Butch Arts. It was my, my first real, real job. And I worked in the dining room restaurant and that's a fine dining restaurant. And there's a lot of young people that work in that place. And I, I started as a dishwasher. Uh, and, um, and as we were walking through the, the basement door, yeah, when I was on training and orientation, the, uh, the manager that was orienting us said, uh, do you see this door that you walk through? And, and uh, we said, yeah. And uh, everyone there acknowledged the doorway and, and said, this is the doorway that you leave all of your stuff from home behind. Uh, and, and just as you're walking through the door, just, just as a thought process, as a thought exercise, just leave it here. You can just take it and set it aside on the outside of this door frame. So it's just sitting outside the door. Don't worry. It won't go anywhere. <laughs> we'll be here it you. will be here for you to, to either pick up as you go back home or you can choose to leave it here and it will be fine we'll look after it we'll look after whatever issue it is and, and you want and we want you to know that whether you are a 15 or 16 year old kid that's working a summer job uh, for a couple of months or whether you're one of the managers here we just ask that the time that you spend here is is time you know we're, we're asking you to spend your time here devoted to what we have paying you to do mm -hmm. uh, and and everybody that comes to work here has got some issues that they're that they have and that they carry with them and we invite you to leave your your issue here and and either leave it here or or pick it up and take it with if you really want it you can pick it up and take it with you and and it, it was it, it's been that's been a a life-changing piece of advice for me and it's to the point that you were making uh that you made earlier which was um i recognize that i early on in, in this business that uh, in this business of politics that 
I have to have a safe place. I have to have a place that's my space. And that's what this home is. And we've invited people into the home and I've done a few of these from our home and that's, and that's fine. But knowing when to draw the line and say, you know what, like this is this space here, that time with the kids or the time with you or the time with my family, that's time that, that is needed as well for the mental aspects of it. Right. And um, so quick question, what is mental strength to you or how have you fostered your own mental strength now that you're aware that it needs to be looked at just as much as physical and so it sounds like I'm in getting into a lot of new stuff but one of the stuff one of the things that you've taught me and that I've started to to and I, in fact I, I need to get back to it because it's been a couple of days but um meditation mm. uh first of all when I've put myself into a meditative state um, my brain just starts creating mm. these amazing ideas. Well, at least I think. Amazing. amazing. I, I think they're amazing. They are, I don't because know. they're coming from a... But, so it opens that up. But it, but it also allows for... It also allows for... Um, uh, sorry, we're just moving the computer around. Yeah, my apologies. It just allows, it, it just allows for a, an empty space to be created and... Uh, and it's really recharging actually you breathe I don't know that people recognize and this is not the mental space this is the physical space but I don't know if people realize that we breathe and that actually stopping and just I did a meditation it was 30 seconds long and all it was was a series of breathing exercises and by the end of it it was like wow that feels great I actually got really re-energized by that it was really quick uh, but it was just a breathing exercise and I don't think we stop often enough and go, and you've just taken a deep breath. Go. <sighs> Sometimes we hold our breath. Um, it's interesting. To, uh, Alice Bacon from our uh, Coffee wonderful shop. Brentwood Bay Village Emporium. Um, the, the, none I of these businesses to, have sponsored this episode no, of the Public Circle Live. And we, we love Alice and John. Now, just jumping into this because health on all levels mm -hmm. is also part of showing up as a complete being in your community. Okay. Right. So Adam and I had this really interesting discussion um, about money and where we spend our money and um, what yeah. we spend our money on. And we actually looked at it and it's a hard thing to do, especially when you're in a relationship and someone does the finances or someone isn't involved as much or whatever. It, it's a, it's a source of stress. And I think there's some people out there that, that may be feeling, feeling me on this one. And you know, what we learned growing up about money and, and, and the health of that in a relationship, in a family. And there's a lot of this sort of unconscious spending and a lot of waste. And also, let's say you buy something that doesn't have value other than that specific moment of gratitude uh, or, or self gratification or whatever. Um, and then it's just gone and it's junk and it's crap and it pollutes the environment or it does this or that. We did notice that we spent a lot of money on coffee and we've, we've made huge leaps and bounds. There was I, one I won't day, get into it. There but. was one day where we bought like six cups of coffee from six different coffee yeah. shops, I think. And or something. so that was a huge reality check for us. 12 cups. Of, I can't remember. It was and ridiculous probably number. Probably didn't have a, a reusable cup. So what we actually discovered in that, and this is why I'm bringing up Alice, we love our time in our community going to Emporium. I cannot go to Emporium without seeing someone who mm. I will either have a hug from, I will make a connection and a plan to see later if I'm running in and out. Right. And that money that I spend is going to a wonderful couple, a great community place, and it's supporting kids around here that work there. Youth. And, or sorry, youth, sorry, youth. Yeah. And, and not just youth, um, other age groups. And it's, it's staying in the community, the money's there and all of that. And so we decided that the place we will spend our money is in these places where we value the whole thing, the experience. The interactions, yeah. And, and that came out of doing work around ourselves, all levels of it. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 you turn over one stone and something else is revealed to you. And I, I think that that's something that's really come out of this, right? So 
We adore you guys. So I'm going to move on to Thanks, the Alice. to the emotional. I think I just had a fly land on my head. Um, it's good. It's feeling you. It's feeling you. So emotionally, um, how do you carry? I know we're talking about your emotions and all that, but let's just take your role as MLA. When people come to you, especially through your constituency office, and are super, super passionate, mm -hmm. angry, mm -hmm. they've been let down. Yeah. They they have all these feelings. It could be something very hard in their family or their business, which is their livelihood. How do you ground yourself and how do you welcome the work that can come out of it that you can help them with, with the emotion that's facing you in that moment and not, not take on sort of that burdensome feeling? Like, how do you balance that? Well, uh, there is every single emotion in, in our constituency office. Um, and that's the constituency work. There's, and, and in the legislative office as well. Uh, you know, the forestry issues, the fishing issues, the orca, orca issues, the issues around the Salish Sea. These are all issues that, that people who live around here uh, and, and in British Columbia are extremely passionate about. Uh, and then there's the, and then there's the, the casework in our constituency office, and we were just—I was in there very briefly today talking about some of the the real challenges that we face uh, in our riding, and 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 our riding is uh, in in many cases, uh, well, every riding is different, but mm. the issues that we face are much different than the issues that my two colleagues face or my other eighty-six colleagues face in their ridings. Right, um, and it seems like um, you know, in, in some cases, there's these incredibly small cracks in public policy or in service delivery and there's always going to be somebody that or some situation that slips through those cracks yeah. and how can we in a compassionate way deal with a situation that it's really an impossible situation and it's heartbreaking there's there's many heartbreaking instances that we've run into already and it and it is it is probably the most difficult mm. piece of this i would not want you or I would not want my parents or my siblings and their families or my friends and their families or my or our kids to have to be in the situation that some kids are in yeah. in this com in the community and and recognizing that we can be really strong advocates but ultimately we don't make we don't make the decision to you know to fix the problem we've got to be an advocate to um Silas is being picked up to go to a, a birthday party. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would just say that the emotional aspects of this job are, there's, there's a full range and every emotion um, from, uh, well, every emotion that you can think of is, is expressed in our constituency office. It's expressed to our staff in our legislative office as well. And, uh, and it is really, it, it is really challenging and really difficult to, um, to stay balanced and it is part of the whole package it's part of the mental physical uh the emotional well-being to ensure and 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 not only that it, it's not just me uh, like i mentioned a couple times my staff or our staff they're they're actually as a constituent of Saanich north and the islands they're your staff yeah um the the two guys that i have working in my office ryan clayton and aldous spurl are a couple of the most compassionate loving beautiful human beings that I could uh, that I could have working with me they don't work for me they work with me we're a team they work for you uh, as a constituent yeah. they're your advocates they work incredibly hard they are they are 100% uh, committed to the best outcomes possible and yet they're in a position they're in a position where they have to sometimes break the news that there's nothing that we can do for you or, uh, and, and, and people will accept it or they, they won't accept it. And, uh, and so there is an emotional toll and, and part of the emotional, um, piece that I carry is the impact on them. Uh, the impact of these, the casework on the staff that, that we have working with us or the, the emotional impact of, uh, some of the negative comments that are on social media, for example, that you see about me or about us or about the situation that we're in. Uh, and and the emotional impact of thinking, 
about um, the fact that I have a family and I've exposed the family to uh, to political talk, which is not always well. It's not always positive and it's not always constructive, and so that that takes an emotional toll as well. So these are all things that are part of the job, and they're all things that require. And I think they're all part of every job yes. to a certain extent. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter whether it's this job I do or a different job you do or I do. Um, and uh, and so it's just about finding the strategies, finding the ways through it to ensure that we're not carrying uh, too much of the burden, that we're carrying just enough of the burden so that yeah. we're not uh, seemingly uncompassionate about the situation, but also recognizing there's limited tools in the toolbox and we have to be able to find the best ways to deploy them and use them. Yeah. A good friend of mine has an outlook on uh, the things that we feel called to do. Um, and so if you were to say, oh, I just feel this calling to work in public service mm -hmm. and somebody says, this is, this is a theory, somebody says, but you have kids, you have a young family. Mm -hmm. That is where you jump in and, and say, and that's why I have to do it. Hmm. Um, not only are you following what you know you're called to do so that you already have that innate ability and you're, you're passionate about it, you should be doing what you're passionate about, but it also teaches your children and hmm. other people's children and, and them that if we step into those roles and have the courage to do things that we feel called to do and, and just set aside the the internal judgments and the judgments from other people which can be really heavy and go but it doesn't matter because this is what i'm called to do and i remember when you got an internship at tsn in toronto and we went out there and it was this big deal and it was the one year that the nhl was on strike and the leafs didn't play and you had to cover like norwegian barrel rolling or i don't know wife something. carrying Oh, wife carrying. Okay. Yeah, the international, the world championships of wife carrying. Google it. So, it exists. Thankfully, that <laughs> happened and you didn't become a sports broadcaster because as much as I know you love doing this kind of stuff, I feel like it was just one step getting you closer to to being of service uh, in this way. And I think it's, not, it's fulfilling for you. I, I know that when you come home, you feel fulfilled. And I mm -hmm. think that that's what we have to do for work. Um, so that... There isn't this huge separation between life and work. And it's funny that we've gotten into this groove in the last year of that it's all the same. It's not like, oh, work's over. Good. Now, we can, now we can be happier. Now we can enjoy life. Or now we can participate in the community. It's all the time. It's always coming in and going out. And there's just this flow. And so maybe the word sacrifice might come up sometimes. Or people might have opinions about us being so public or sharing it, but uh, I just feel that, that you've really sort of identified that that's how you can, can serve or however, whatever words you, you feel are appropriate oh, for yourself, um, that that's why you have to do it. And so one of the things that we practice in our home is, is gratitude, uh, especially for food. Um, and being thankful and then spending some time before bed um, thinking about how we can put our loving energy and our prayers towards other people uh, for whatever they might be going through. And on days when we don't necessarily have a specific person um, uh, to send that to, we just say to anyone who needs it, because we are not always aware of what's out there, what need is out there. Mm -hmm. um, the people that aren't even aware that they could go to their MLA for help. Or whatever and mm -hmm. so um, a big motivator for for us talking today I think was that we're coming to this place of awareness about um, that the health of of you is no different than the health of me or whoever's watching and then the people that don't even have access to this so if we show up better in the room then we're better equipped to help the people who are the most needy and and that is a true reflection of the the society the health of the society that we're in this work is much more valuable to say than sports it's broadcasting not, i mean donovan and donovan, not to say yeah. that 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 sports doesn't have great great value i just feel Escape. like adam would have been a, a smaller version of himself had he been commentating on on the leafs 
winning the cup next year. Uh, <laughs> Every August. So um, it looks better this year than it does. I mean, if <laughs> if we were to break it down, if we were to look at the game tape, if we were to look at the numbers and the rosters, uh, the Leafs have got a better funny. chance this year than any year that I've been a ridiculously stubborn fan of theirs. Um, I, I'd say I'll say this. Uh, People say to me, well, isn't it irresponsible for a young, a, f- a father of a young family or the husband uh, or whatever person with a young family to be doing this work? And, and I'll say there's two things about this. One, um, I live in the city where the capital, I live in the capital city. So there is a definite advantage that I have in that no matter whether I'm going to my constituency office or I'm going to the legislature, it is a it is a commute. I come home at night, and while there are long days, I can tuck my kids into bed every night. And yeah. and there is a value in that. And I think the I think the decision to run initially would have been uh, there would have been different um, uh, there would have been a different value set uh, that was that was considered about running for office if I had to fly out on a on a Sunday and come back on a Thursday night. Like, that would have been a completely different conversation. But that said, it is so absolutely critical that we have a diverse set of voices, uh, whether they be, uh, you know, a people of cultural diversity, people of, of, of uh, different abilities, uh, people with, uh, you know, age that we have people from all segments of our society represented in that legislature uh, because I can't, I mean, as much as I can consider other people's experiences, uh, I think it's difficult for me to understand it without that voice talking about it. And so when we're talking about education policy, for an example, it's really important that people who have kids in the public education system are sitting around the table having that conversation. If we're talking about if we're talking about reconciliation, well, I don't have all the answers, and I'm only one person with one set of experiences. Yeah, yeah. It's an important voice, and it's an important set of experiences to be considered in the conversation. So that diversity of thought, that diversity of experience, the diversity uh, is important, and so it is important that the experience of Silas and Ella, whether it be in minor sports or in dance or in um, theater music programs or in education, uh, their experience in all various aspects of our society can, and, and our experience as parents in 2018 struggling with or, or thriving or, or doing whatever we're doing with the, the scenarios that we are doing, I think it's important to, um, I think it's important to recognize that the sacrifice that we make, and I think every parent that works and every parent is making sacrifices. So there's nothing special in this. No. It's the fact is, is that we make the same sacrifices that our peer group makes. Um, and I, and I think, I think that it's important that, uh, that we take a look at the context. You know, yeah. Donovan makes a point uh, about, about the benefits of, of being an MLA. And there, there are lots of benefits of being an, I am not complaining about, the, the, the workload or any of that, I was com- well aware of it. But I think that it's important that we do have these kind of conversations that we're having to bring into context, into perspective, the job, the work, the, the work-life balance or the work-life imbalance, the things that, uh, that, that, we, that we gain and the things that we give uh, from it. Just, it's, it's important just to be real from, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and to address these things head on. So I'd say... I'd say to this, you know, um, that uh, it is critically important that we are creating a situation in the legislature that attracts all sorts of diversity. We are going to make much better decisions and we're going to have much more informed decisions when I can sit and listen to people who have a different experience than I have and get a better understanding and, and maybe in the end make a different and hopefully a better, more informed decision than I would have made if I hadn't had that experience of talking to those people. Right. And I think too, um, in, in, you know, in any working role, uh, when you have some responsibility to, 
a group of people. You're in your case, it's quite a lot larger than than mine, um, or or community. Um, when you're taking care of the whole self, yeah, you've got more to offer, and you're actually able to receive that's right those the information in those conversations. You're a lot less reactive. You're you're inclusive. You consider more opinions, um, and you're able to tap into more resources through other people and other other means, like like you just said. So I think that's you know a big part of why this conversation was kind of an important one today. Um, it was mm -hmm. prompted by you know you two years out. ago. Well, it was prompted by the fact that two years ago, we were standing in Alice and John's coffee shop, the Brentwood Emporium. There was you, there was Aldous, and there was about, what, maybe about 30 people that showed up for that. And that was the official launch of the campaign to become MLA. That was two years ago today. It's really kind of um, interesting how quickly time has, has flown by. Yeah. And um, thanking you for doing the work that you do because uh it is not my comfort level or expertise or uh whatever uh, but i think that you've definitely opened up uh my eyes to having a capacity to love people more and being more patient and um you know realizing that there's differences of opinions and that we have uh lots of different viewpoints and life experiences and, and belief systems about how things should work. Um, but, but still having that space for, for people to come mm -hmm. and, and, and interact with. And, you know, you've really taught me a lot about being open. Um, you've taught me a lot about work when you believe in something that you want to fight for it. Um, I'm getting a little bit choked up, but just, you know, I, I just appreciate that, that I have a mirror for you and a role model in you for, uh, for the work that you do. And, and I hope that that trickles out and I'm sure you've got a ton of role models. Maybe we could do, or you could, sorry, maybe you could do one of these on role models. Um, you know, people that are in the community and, and, and where you've been inspired in your life. Daylene is asking you, where do you see yourself in two more years? Um, Buff, right? like really built, like bigger than mine. Ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> Ridiculous. We're going to have to, we're probably going to have to take a, a, a we're going to have to put the after. camera, no, we'll have to put the camera way further back because there'll be no way that I can fit in the <laughs> screen. Be like, Good grief. Okay. Um, oh, I see... Funny. You know, I, I think uh, two years from now, I'll st still be the MLA in Saanich North and the Islands, just working at the end of my first term. I have a commitment uh, to the people. I made a commitment that I would that I'd work my hardest to create the most um, uh, to to create a, a a government that is responsible, that's responsive, and that's a challenge. We're we're in a minority situation, but. I think that we have a responsibility to make government work, not to not to view it as our own uh, little power base. That how we can make it work for us, but how we can work as as public servants to to you. So, I think two years from now, we're just heading into the the uh, a year and a half. I'm still an MLA in this in this government. Um, I think that we we continue to work on uh, we continue to work on our relationship uh, as a couple, and we'll be. It'll be 14 years that we'll be in, uh, a couple We're married, like 16 or something that we've been together, some craziness like that. 17. Whatever it is, 17. Whatever. And I'll be whatever. Um, so, like, look, I mean, I, I just think that uh, it's always a work in progress and um, we'll continue to be your neighbor, uh, Daylene. Um, we just are always living right up the street from you. Uh, <laughs> although you probably don't want everyone to know that. Uh, so so, somewhere you live somewhere in, yeah. in some place so, so we'll, we'll continue to be your neighbor and we'll continue to uh, be open and and love our community and work hard for our community that's my I spoke for both of us but I'm assuming that it's you're your on show the, I'm assuming uh, that you're on the same page uh, we we were gonna do a 30 you, 
I know. I'm a you talker. took you took the show over and you said, okay, we'll do thirty minutes. We're at what like three hours now. So no. okay. <laughs> get con- uh, get Donovan, control of this wait, show. Wait, there's a relationship question. How much time do you carve out for the two of you to keep your relationship strong? Is it sacred time or does it ever get bumped? It gets bumped, absolutely. Um, but whenever we can put something into the schedule, we have accountability. So, and so there's a, there is it doesn't always get bumped. That's not entirely truthful because Sundays I, I don't. I will work. bump it. I bump it sometimes. Sure, sure, but sun, but but to the point of the work, Sundays I don't work. Right, like Sundays. Like Ninety-eight percent. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So when something comes up. When something comes up on a Sunday, uh, and if you're a community group in in the community, you've been d- denied. I've I've said no. Yeah. I I so Sundays are the day that, uh, as many of you know, Sunday's the day that I fold laundry and watch. In the winter time, I watch football, and in the summertime, well, we got rid of cable, so I don't watch baseball anymore. But I fold laundry on Sundays, and we get ready for the week, you know, in advance. Meal and that prep. is one time. Yeah. Friday nights. So after we're done this extremely long version of uh, of the Public Circle Live that has been gone completely off the rails, I'd point out. I I, I'm it was off. Going well, but... I'm done. I, I'm going to go. We've got a family reunion this weekend that we're going to go to tomorrow, but I need to create some quiet space. And so Friday nights, you know, you've off to do uh, when it's on, you go off and do poetry stuff. And I take the kids and we go swimming. And tonight I'm going to go and get some quiet time with uh, with Ella, with my daughter, and we're going to reconnect. Right, Ella? And so um, there are there are sacred times in which yeah. in which I don't uh, I don't do events, but to your point of bumping them. No, I was just teasing. Sometimes sometimes we do. Um, but we I'd should like go to on end. dates more, shouldn't we? We should. Yeah, we should. And, and I'm making a commitment <clears throat> to date night to be uh, yeah to have more fun. Uh, because uh, I've historically been extremely hard on myself and when I'm not seeing results or I'm not seeing productivity or I haven't written a poem in a while, there's like this negative God, self-talk what is going and on? I, I, there's not that kind of fun, 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 fun. So uh, we're trying to do that a little more. We went out to Port Renfrew, slept in our van. Adam legitimately beat me at gin rummy multiple times. He got to 500 long before I did. It's because I'm way better at that game than you are. Like, I taught him. I'm, um, <laughs> I'm like, remarkably so much better <laughs> at gin rummy than you are. That I actually took a few hands off, so that it wasn't such a, an embarrassing margin of victory. <laughs> but I win so little that I have to really be obnoxious when I do. Yeah, I provide losing cards to him so that he doesn't have. A- bed uh, self um, whatever <laughs> anyway um so lastly because of sort of our practice of, of gratitude um wow you might today get this done within thinking, an hour today i've been i'm trying to get to that hour i just um practicing gratitude so for for me today my mom keeps appearing because of aretha franklin passing away uh. and and one of her favorite songs is um an Aretha song and so just considering that mm-hmm. and and you and I've great talked people. about this before where when you have a feeling about another person reach out to them and and do some kind of act of kindness I've been writing appreciate appreciation letters for people um, and that's been very good because it actually gets you to sit still and be quiet for a moment and think about you know that other person and and what they mean and how they've helped you in your own personal growth and i'm sure you've got lots of thank you letters you could write to staff or or other mm-hmm. mlas or people that work in the legislature that we never hear of um and so you know wanting today for me personally i just am grateful for for my mom and um you know also your sister heather because i feel like she um and I'm just going with whatever's coming up right now. She's always been somebody that's had this really interesting um, perspective on things. And she's got a little bit of twist of sarcasm and she's very humorous. And I'm really drawn to like lightness and, and humor right now. And so 
today I'm thankful for your sister Heather and what she brings to the table in, in our discussions politically, within the family, you know, just about life in general. And um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I uh, love my anyway, sister. so those are those are two so, people I am thankful for today. So I will um, officially take us over the hour mark. I'll just point that out. Um, but I will say that I am grateful for my other sister, Joni. And uh, as many of you know, I have worked uh, on the salmon ish salmon files. And uh, our community, Sartlip, Chocolip, where we grew up, mm. um, has been in conser salmon conservation mode now for a number of years. The, the chief and council made the decision that, that we, could not, uh, we could not fish. And, we, and, and the sockeye, normally we would get food and ceremonial fish each year, uh, but the, the salmon runs have been so low that the chief and council decided that, that they weren't going to participate in that. And, and actually, Back they, were, to your sister. they were one of the, well, this is about the oh, decisions okay. that they made. Um, were one of the few groups that actually decided that conservation was an important piece. You know, we often talk about who's going to, how we're going to carve up the last salmon that's there between the various groups that want it. And, and Sartlip Council, to their credit, decided that they weren't going to take that piece, their piece. This year, on the other hand, we did get some food fish. And my sister Joni, um, and, and with the support of her council and, and Simon uh, Smith Jr., uh, went through an awful lot of pain to find a, a fisherman that, that could uh, bring us uh, fish. Our community um, is, is now kind of feeling the effects of having some sockeye in our freezers for the first year in a, in a long time. Um, and uh, we see on social media everybody celebrating it, and I want to lift my hands uh, to Joni and to Simon and to the council. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna focus in on Joni right now because I know just how much she wore of this, and it was tough over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Do we have a fisherman? Do we not have a fisherman? Are we gonna get fish? Are we not gonna get fish? And people's anxiety getting up, and she fought through it all, and she brought the and and I remember the other night when we were putting our fish in the freezer, how I looked at it and said, I feel like I'm a very wealthy man right now yeah. because we have a few pieces of sockeye. And, and uh, that is how close to home that, that issue is for us. It is for my sister. And, uh, and one other piece that I'll say to this is I'm an awful fish filet. Like, I'm, I'm actually pretty good, but I'm awful. I, I feel like I just do not do, the, do, do our relatives, the salmon, any favors. And last night when I watched Joni no. take a knife to a piece of salmon, she shows that love to that fish in a way that I think that even that uh, master chef, what's his name? Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. He couldn't even swear at her. He would have no <laughs> words for her. She would, she'd kick his butt right away. Like on that, there's nothing he could say. So anyways, well, it's long and drawn out. It took me three minutes to say it. I've been complaining about how long this has gone. I raise my hands to you, Joni. Thank you. My gratitude is to you. My gratitude as well is to everybody who joined us today to, to hear about us, talk about us. I, I don't know. I, I thought, I think that it's, I think that we have stuff to share, but for all of you that hung in there, thank you uh, for hanging out with us this afternoon. I'm going to let you close the show. It's your show. All right. Um, goodness me. Oh, <laughs> um, I appreciate that you are willing and open to sort of break boundaries and step out of boxes and have fun and contribute and share um, more than just your, you know, title. Um, and I think that in doing that, you really bring uh, more to the table and more for people to feel comfortable and that, that you have a space for them. And so my hope and my wish is that uh, more conversations like this continue to uh, help others, whether they show up at your office or not, mm -hmm. that, that if they're in the safety of Facebook world or, or can just feel a little more acceptance for themselves. Um, and a little more willing to consider what they can possibly contribute to their own community, small or large, um, 
it's irrelevant because impacting one person, you know, we've all got that person um, that can just absolutely change our lives in a moment. Um, and my hope is that some small thing that we talk about will inspire somebody to, to take that mm -hmm. step and uh, perhaps move into their own MLA, right? Yep. And so I'm, I'm very grateful that um, you're open to that. And I, and I think that you're a real leader. And I appreciate that about you. And I, and I appreciate that I'm lucky enough to be um, witness to it and um, part, of, part of this world. And I think it's, the world is getting better. It's getting messy so that it can get better. And uh, I think we have a responsibility to uh, take care of our own business. And so we talked about the physical, the mental, the emotional. Um, we didn't get into spiritual so much, but I think it fell into a lot of those things. And um, I, I think that the conversation can continue to get broader. And I appreciate that, that you're willing to be a part of that. Um, and uh, I'm thankful for the people that, that are open to that. So again, just huge thankful uh, feelings and... and, and uh, I think that's... Yeah, uh, we're going to just wrap it up. Although I got to wait for a lucky number. Ella, what, what do you think? What are you thankful for? Lipstick, I see. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Thank you. We'll be back again next week, 4.30. Bye-bye. Fridays, 4.30. Um, we'll see you next week. So until next time. Hi, Aqua. Hi, Aqua. What do you say? Hi, Aqua.